What's going on guys? Victor here and we're jumping straight into today's video. It is the 2023 mullet run and we are after some snook today. So this is a really special fish because as a fisherman, you're the only one who really is able to consume them. Snook are not able to be sold in markets, so it's a real fisherman's treat. And we are on the beach. Got my buddy Yames down here. Say what's up. What's going on, guys? We got Chef Yames, Dennis behind the camera. We just walked out on the beach and we're scoping it out looking for mullet pods. Basically, this time of year, a bunch of bait fish known as mullet just kind of come down the beach from the Carolinas. And you got snook and tarpon feeding all over them, so that's what we're doing today. I got the snag rod. I got the mullet rod and we're just looking for these really dark shadows on the beach which are the mullet pods and what we're looking for too is predators actually blowing them up so you want to see white water you want to see tarpon jumping out of the water the snook making them erupt because you can go and fish a pod and there'd be nothing on it the most important thing is find finding feeding fish it's the most important thing as a fisherman so well, let's make our way over to there and walk you through what we're doing all right so i kind of like spectated first for Victor before I got before he got here and, and I walked like two miles just following these they're like cruising south pretty pretty fast but there's a big pot like half a mile down the beach right now that we're looking at probably getting busted so we're gonna make our way over there whose dog is this man I wish I could have a dog or a cat but sadly your boy Vic is allergic I don't know what happened to me I grew up with a dog my whole life and I turned like 20 years old and all of a sudden my body's like, nope, you're allergic to dogs and cats and that's the end of it for you. Really big black knot of them. You can see when the mullet really pop up. And what we look for too, when the mullet are down deep, no bueno. That means they're comfortable, they're chill, they're relaxing, have a nice day at the beach. When they're up top and it's really dark, that means there's predators underneath them pushing them up. And that's when they are stressed out. That's when the fish are feeding on them. We just saw a big explosion, so we're headed down that way to the south end of the school. All right, we got Dennis with the fancy new lens. Big investment for the channel right there. Look at that thing. You ever see a lens that big? And I'm gonna snag a mullet. Got one. All right, we got our mullet. Standard bottom rig. We got a egg weight, mustad circle hook. Hook him right here in the tail so he swims away from the weight. And we're good to go, baby. And now that I got Dennis, the videos are gonna be so much nicer because he could focus on filming the whole time and I could focus on getting the fish on video. So I want to always, whenever I fish the mullet run, cast on the outside edge of the school or in the sand. You want to single out your mullet. You don't want to be in the middle of the school. Oh, they just went off right there. Jack's going through them. Well, guys, my mullet that I snagged just got ate on the snag rod. We'll see what it is. I think it's a snook. So this mullet pod we've been following from the north side of the pier all the way to the south side. Oh yeah, it is a snook. James, that's a slot. It might be. Be careful, there's three treble hooks. He's slot all day, isn't he? Oh. Yeah, he's over slot, huh? Wow. He devoured that mullet. <laughs> you could tell that I didn't snag him because it's not anywhere in his body. Beautiful fish. Probably like 33, 34 inches, so I'm not gonna measure him. He's gonna be too big to keep and take home for dinner, but we're on the board, baby. First snook, mullet run 2023 for Vic. I'll let her go. Thank you, James. This side of the pier is a lot shallower, 
and all the mullet are getting stuck in this little tide pool and sandbar right here. Pretty neat. All right, guys, hooked up. Hooked up. It's on top. Wonder if it's a jack or a snook. Kind of fighting like a jack. Ate it way outside the mullet pot out there. I think it's gonna be a little hefty jack. All those mullet don't like that jack running through them. All right. There's Mr. S there's Mr. Circle Hook in the corner of the mouth. That's gonna be maybe a tarpon. That might be a tarpon right there, huh? Oh yeah, or a big jack. That's not a little fish. What do we got? Maybe it's a big snook. Or it might be a shark. I don't think it's a tarpon because it hasn't jumped. Today was not the right day to do back and buys at the... Oh! I shouldn't have been talking, should have been fishing. Biceps were locking up. I think it was a shark because I had a lot of just big aggressive head shakes, but then when it was swimming, there was no tail beats, which is usually indicative of a shark. Oh, yeah. Wow. Wow. What was that, a shark? Yeah. When sharks are swimming, like when you're fighting them, you don't really feel the distinct tail beat like you would with a tarpon or snook. So he cut me off, which also makes me think it's a shark because it's great. Get back out there. Okay, so we've been working our way down south from the pier. And the mullet right now, they're just chilling. They're on the inside of the sandbar. And on the south side of the pier, those predators like tarpon and Jackson snook, I don't think they want to come in really shallow. The mullet are taking a nice little break. They're just cruising the shoreline. On the north side of the pier, it was really deep. So we've just been following them for like a mile now and nothing's really busting them. You know, none of the predators are on them. But I think if we look ahead, that sandbar gets further and further out. So those predators will probably push in. So we're gonna just keep working our way down, following the school because it's a nice pod. This is like the pod you dream of. Not too big, not too small and really close to shore. A lot of times the mullet are out of casting distance, which is not good for a land-based fisherman. We spent the rest of the afternoon still looking for that slot snook. And when I say slot snook, I mean they have to be between 28 and 32 inches to keep in the state of Florida. As we approached sunset, the bite really slowed down with the only fish really hitting the beach were Jack Crevel. Ricky and I are just waiting on Dennis to show up at the house. Gonna head out for another beach sesh. Got the rods ready, gonna put them in the truck. But first we're gonna grab a little bite to eat at the house. Earlier this year, you guys heard me say that I wanted to get in the best shape of my life. I'm about to turn 32 at the end of the year and I've really been taking my training and nutrition seriously. The most important factor in achieving any goal in life is staying consistent. And that is where today's video sponsor comes in, Factor. Thank you very much, babe. We are about to enjoy a delicious meal from Factor. I got a, like this really delicious creamy chicken with some zucchini. Ricky's got some beef with some cauliflower rice. You guys can see by the cooking portions of this video, we don't mess around with food. These meals are incredible. I'm not gonna lie, I was a little skeptical about a pre-cooked meal, but these things have been absolutely delicious. Super simple to come home, just throw it in the microwave. Not only do Factor meals taste great, they come fresh, never frozen. They have over 34 weekly options to choose from, and I love how I can pick meals that meet my needs. I'm a pretty active guy. I love going to the gym. I love getting a lift in, so a high protein diet is super important to me and Factor offers a high protein option, which I absolutely love. Brooke and I are pretty busy, so between all the traveling and fishing, it's nice 
to be able to just go in the fridge, pick out a factory meal, pop it in the microwave, and you get a nice home-cooked meal in under two minutes. If you want to try it yourselves, head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code LANDSHARK50 to get 50% off your first factor box. Once again, guys, head over to factor75.com, use my code LANDSHARK50, I'll have it on the screen here, as well as linked below to get 50% off your first box. We got the factor flowing through our veins. You ready to go to the beach? Let's head to the beach and see if I can outfish you. Mm, she usually does. We'll see about this. What up? Hey, what are you doing? Rigging up right here. I had the first mullet I hit, broke my line. So that's a good start. Pot isn't that solid, so it's hard to snag them right now. That was on you, wasn't it? Okay, cool. Woo! There we go, first bait oh, in. That's a slot. First look of the day, baby. My first mullet out. Here, Vic. Or arm. Annika with a nice snook here, nice 40 incher. I guess the girls are gonna get it done today. All right, let me grab Somebody's that. Somebody's gotta do it. Oh my God. Juicy. Oh yeah, Brookie's gonna get one. I messed her up on that last fish, got snagged in her line. Hopefully it can make up for it. Second fish of the day. Only my second mullet out. Haven't seen it yet. I'm guessing it's gonna be another snuff. Oh, here it comes up top. Woo, baby. That's what you love to hear. Woo! Yeah? I loosened my drag a little bit after that last fish pull and hook. Oh, yeah. Brooks fish now. That was a really, I was just telling James earlier, like you cannot beat this as a fisherman. 
42 inch snook during the middle of the day. That's like, people come here and chase that fish for a lifetime. This is such a unique time of year where you can catch giant tarpon and snook, no boat needed, no charter needed. Anybody can do this and that's why it's so special. A lot of times they'll pick it up, they'll feel that weight or they don't like the way that that mullet's sitting and they'll just drop it. So I'll leave it out there two, three minutes. But a lot of times once they crush it once, they won't come back for it. So you guys can see that right there, all his scales are knocked off. That's a snook sucking him in and spitting him out, but it's not worth it to be lazy and uh, keep fishing them. So you always want a fresh, fresh, fresh bait. I got picked up for one second, but I dropped it. Let's see if it comes back. Oh yeah, baby. So he's going back. Beautiful. All right, guys, there we go. My third snook of the day. Beauty. Not as big as that first one I caught, but still over slot. So she's going back in to keep being a big breeder snook. Every time I can feel I'm getting a bite, I look down the beach and I'm like, Dennis! And he comes sprinting down, and bam. Pretty epic day. I think that's my best day of snook fishing for sure. The boys said that snook was maybe around 42 inches. I'm pretty sure my biggest snook I've ever caught was 40 inches, so hit my PB as well as I think before the, I've only ever caught two snook off the beach, so today that's three, baby. So after a couple days on the beach, we did not get our slot snook, but luckily my buddy Jameson asked me if I wanted this one for a catch and cook and I was not going to turn him down on the offer. So we got a snook for a catch and cook and I'm very excited because this is one of my favorite eating fish. And earlier you guys heard me say in the beginning of this video as we were walking down the beach that this fish is special in the fact that only fishermen can really enjoy it. This is not a fish in the U.S. that you can, to my knowledge, buy in a restaurant, get in a restaurant, or buy in a fish market. It's not a fish that is able to be commercially harvested, and it's also a uh, very geographically uh, bound fish. It's really only in a few parts of Texas, Florida, and it doesn't even really make it to the northern, northern parts of Florida. They have very few snook compared to South Florida, so it's a super special fish and a super special meal to be able to share with your friends and family as a fisherman and also just their body and morphology is kind of like nothing else i mean when you think of snapper species or grouper there's so many different variations but the only thing i could really compare a snook to is something like a striper in the northeast they're not like a redfish or a drum out of all the fish they are so unique in that aspect so 
We're gonna fillet it up with the eight inch dual edge deck stream. Can you guys see, use the back side of the knife to get through those thick scales. And I'm gonna to continue to get through these scales going down this snook's body from the head all the way to the tail. Great um, fish to use this knife for. I mean, you guys see those scales are pretty gnarly on that snook. Wipe them off. Now we're gonna go from the tail half down to the head half. This is also a great fish for people who don't like fishy fish. It is about as mild as they come. Very, very white. Um, just, it, it's a really special, unique fish. And I know I say that word a lot, but they're hard to fool. They get a little stupid this time of year with all those mullet in their face. But other than that, I mean, any snook fisherman knows these guys are smart and they will a lot of times turn down live bait, the fanciest of lures. They can be a real pain in the butt sometimes to, to trick. So we got one slab of snook off of the side and we're gonna check his belly. These snook are all along the beaches and they're getting their last big feed before winter time comes. These fish do two things in the winter time. They either move offshore and actually will winter out on the near shore wrecks and reefs, or they'll move inshore, but they get pretty lethargic and they're not as active as they are in the summertime. In the summertime, they will spawn around the inlets, um, piers, bridges, jetties, all the near shore spots. And then in the wintertime, you'll get a few resident fish that'll stay around the piers and beaches and stuff, but most of them move inshore into the rivers, the inlets, or offshore. So uh, it's really a seasonal fish, but during the mullet run, when there's all these mullet on the beach in their face, they just go crazy. They're just trying to, it's like a bear that's trying to fatten up for the winter time, you know? Okay. Let's get the other side of our snook. So then we got both sides. Yeah. His belly's empty, which is crazy to think during the mullet run that he doesn't just, isn't uh, gorged with mullet in his stomach, you know? Another thing about these fish, sand paper like mouths. These fish will make your leader just, it, they just destroy leader. I mean, this guy will fray through a hundred pound leader like nothing. Now let's skin him up. Working from the tail to the head half, pushing away from me. I do have two edges, so I am mindful of that. But I don't cut myself. I do have an edge on the back side of the knife. No skin. And check this out. They got the coolest pattern. They're also nicknamed line siders in the state of Florida, and you can tell why. This is actually, I don't know if it's directly correlated with the line, but the lateral line in a fish, like a snook, they use it to sense vibrations and stuff, so they're very sensitive to movement in the water. And I think it really helps them hunt down their prey. Let me get underneath this rib cage. Remove this pin bone. There we have it. We got boneless, skinless snook. Jameson, if you're watching, thank you so much, buddy, because this video wouldn't have went on and this portion of the video would have never happened if it wasn't for you. It can be hard to get a slot snook, especially during the middle of the day. So thank you very much for your donation. I will see you guys in the kitchen to whip up something really delicious for the family. So Dennis just made a good point. This fish is one week old and there are not very many fish that'll look like that with their bloodline intact after a week. So when you hear people talk about trash fish or good quit or good fish or just a good quality fish, usually they're talking about the shelf life of that fish. Fish that freeze really well or fish that won't get a lot of odor or fall apart on you are usually indicative of a good quality fish. And as you guys have heard me say many times in this video, snook is a real treat for fishermen because we're pretty much the only ones who can eat it in the States. Internationally, I think it's a little bit different with the, uh, the regulations, but over here, unless you're fishing for them yourself, you're not gonna find this in a market or a restaurant. So what I did is we just went down with some branch and vine, Meyer lemon infused olive oil. 
and you guys can find that linked below. And I am just coating all sides of our snook, give it a little extra flavor, help our spices stick. Got these beautiful six ounce portions of fish, four to six ounces. I mean, look at that. That bloodline, it just, it doesn't go bad. I've also started sauteing some onions in our saute pan, and I got some scallion infused branch and vine olive oil in here. And we're gonna just do a long grain rice, but I wanted to give it some more flavor, so we're gonna start out with some onion and garlic. Let that go, come back over to our snook. We're gonna go in with some coriander. So in the fridge, you guys haven't seen it yet, but I made a orange tahini salad dressing. And I got a lot of Middle Eastern flavors going into this dinner. And I got a good Middle Eastern salad. So I think coriander, some cardamom, you know, kind of spice it up and get those Eastern flavors in there for a snook. Most people don't want to admit it, but most people like bland fish. They like a mild fish. They don't like the oiliness of a fish. So coriander, garlic powder, some paprika, cardamom. This stuff has just like the most aromatic, fresh uh, flavor. I really like to use it in cooking, but it is a little overpowering, so I'm not going in with too much. Really wakes up your nostrils. Onion powder, I find, gives up a little sweetness. I'm gonna flip it over and do the exact same thing on the other side. But if we come over here to our onions, just gonna go in with a couple of cloves of minced garlic, a quarter stick of butter, because we're gonna toast our rice. I'm just gonna let that butter melt down a little bit more before I put in our rice to toast. Extra long grain rice, gonna go in and we're gonna toast it. Four cups. Mix that all around. Really let that rice get coated. Some more scallion olive oil. The smell of butter and onions, butter and garlic, and the smell of butter toasted with rice is just like no other. I love it. So now we got eight cups of water mixed with some chicken bouillon. And now, just cook it like any other rice. We're gonna bring it to a simmer and reduce the heat to low and it'll go for about 20 minutes. Okay, out here, Camp Chef Apex Grill. This is the Camp Chef Lumberjack Skillet. For me, it's always tough to find a big pan to cook for all the people that we cook for, so this thing is coming in really handy tonight because it is probably like I don't know, what do you think that is, Dennis? 16, 17 inches mm -hmm. across? So we're gonna go in with a lot of avocado oil. We're not frying it, we're just gonna pan fry it. So, not a you know full fry. Let that oil get nice and hot. Okay, so I'm gonna go in with the thickest pieces first. We're gonna go right on the outside. All right, we're gonna flip. Just get a little color on there, you know, nothing crazy. Just a little golden brown. Gorgeous. Oh yeah. Out here, that might look dark, but I'm telling you, those are everyone's favorite pieces right there. So those are the extra crispy ones. And then we're just gonna throw in a little bit of butter. A quarter stick of butter for 11 pieces of fish really is nothing. Lower the heat so that way one side of the fish, you know you get it, give it some really good color. Um, you cook it most of the way on one side. We're gonna just let some butter melt, pull on one side, and we're gonna kind of just baste our fish so everyone gets that little pop of butter in their fish. So I'm just gonna take that butter and just kind of baste it on top of that fish. So then to go with our fish and our rice, we got a little arugula salad, grape tomatoes, red onion, leek, cashew for some crunch, radish, cucumber, 
and orange. And then in here, I made a homemade orange tahini salad dressing. So we got tahini, um, orange juice, garlic, a little bit of ginger, some honey, and I think that's about it. And we're gonna just go over our salad right here. So the base for the salad is arugula, and I just hit it with some salt. Every piece of arugula is nice and salty, because there's nothing worse than food not perfectly salted. Food should be perfectly salted. The lumberjack skillet. Beautiful, that's a thing of beauty. I'm just gonna let everyone kind of plate up themselves. We got the orange tahini arugula salad. We got our delicious rice. And then the snook, the star of the show. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Fisher. Doesn't matter to me, it all looks good. Nice thick piece. Thank you. So the last two weeks, Dennis and I have spent filming the mullet run. This year is gonna be the best mullet run video I've ever filmed, and it's because the guy behind the camera right there, we've been going hard and we got five more days before he sets foot on a cruise for seven days and never wants to see the beach again, but I got him for five more days. So I'm looking forward to sharing that with you guys. I haven't, I haven't had snook in a long, long time. It used to be one of my favorite fish. And uh, stopped fishing for him for some reason. But it's beautiful and delicious. Oh, it's super good. I was uh, eating my salad, waiting for it to cool off, and I, Victor already asked, does anyone want more fish? And I wish I would've tried it before he said that, so I would've said, uh, me, I'll take some more, because it's, it's something else. Victor asked me if I wanted a crispy piece, and I made the right choice. It is so good. Super seasoned, I like crispy, and crispy is really good. Thanks, Gabby. I picked a piece that wasn't crispy and it's <laughs> just as good. It's um, beautiful white fish, um, so tasty. I love this what tahini. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm On not sure salad. what's in it, but it's a, a beautiful salad. Great job, Vic. Like my dad said, I I don't think I've had snook probably since I was a little kid. I remember walking down the beach and my dad casting and occasionally getting one that a slot that we can keep. Um, it's amazing, super white, flaky. Uh, again, Victor's the king of marrying all these flavors together, so another perfect meal. Thank you. Um, it's really juicy, really flaky, and really well seasoned. It's really good. Thanks, Victor. Here we go. <laughs> Brooke used to tell me that she used to go snook fishing with her brothers and the dad, and I don't know why they don't do it anymore. But we did get him a bunch of snook lures last Christmas and they're still in the package for some reason. We got to put them to good use and get them to go on the beach. I told Fisher today, I said, um, you know, you go to the gym and walk on the treadmill. I said, I don't know why I don't walk down to the jetties like I used to when I was young. Go down there at the crack of dawn and throw those lures at the jetty and beautiful walk, watch the sunrise and maybe catch a fish. So yeah, I, I, gotta, I gotta start doing that again. Well, you guys saw us catch our share of snook in this video. It's just so hard to get that slot snook, so I'm glad that we're still enjoying this meal from a friend being able to share one with us. But snook is a delicious fish. I think I enjoy catching them. The bigger ones, better than uh, eating them, though. <laughs> so that is a wrap. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. And big thank you to Factor for sponsoring today's video. I'm gonna have all of their stuff linked below, like we spoke about, and can't wait to share the rest of the mullet run with you guys. See ya.